We have a problem statement here to generate prime numbers using sieve of Eratosthenes method. So let me read that to you. Implement in a C program the following procedure to generate prime numbers from 1 to 100. This procedure is called sieve of Eratosthenes. So there are five steps. So let me read the first step. Fill an array num of 100 with numbers from 1 to 100. Second step, starting with the second entry in the array, set all its multiples to zero. And the third step, proceed to the next non-zero element and set all its multiples to zero. And the fourth step, repeat step three till you have set up the multiples of all the non-zero elements to zero. And the final step, step five. At the conclusion of step four, all the non-zero entries left in the array would be prime numbers. So print out these numbers. So let's implement this in a C program one step at a time. So the first step. So before that, this is our array from 0 to 15, which has elements from 1 to 16. So the first step is fill an array num of 100 with numbers from 1 to 100. So I'll take n as 100. Okay, so I have taken only a small piece of our array just for the purpose of illustration. Uh, I'll explain the snippet of codes here as well as on our code editor directly. Okay, so let me write the code that is num of n, n being 100 here, and I'll take i and j for for loops. So now for let me initialize i to the first index which is 0 and iterate this until the last index which is n and for each iteration increment the value of i by 1. So now insert the value of i plus 1 at num of i. Okay. So as you can see at location 0, 1 is present. At location 1, 2 is present. So index plus 1. So index value is present at i. Plus 1 would give the natural numbers we require. Okay, this would give us an array with numbers 1 to 100. Okay. So let me show that to you on our code editor. I'll even show you the output. So the index is from 0 to 99. So 0 to 99 means 100 elements, which are from 1 to 100. So let me write the code and execute it. So I'll take an array variable of type integer, num of i. And for now, let me take only i. So the macro n, and it's assigned 100 here. So let me start with a for loop. I'll assign i to 0, that is first index of any array, and iterate this for loop until i is less than n. Less than n means 99. 0 to 99 means 100, 100 times this for loop gets iterated. So I'll write num of i is equal to i plus 1. So let me output whatever is present inside our array variable num of i. So it should have numbers from 1 to 100. So let's check that. Let me remove the spacing here. Okay, I hope it's it will work out well. Let me execute it. Okay, so the numbers are entered from 1 to 100. That's what our first step asks us to do. So now let's look at second step. Starting with the second entry in the array. Second entry in the array means the position that is index 1, which has element 2 in it. Okay. So starting with the second entry in the array, set all its multiples to 0. That is multiples of 2 to 0. Because if any number is divisible by 2, then it's composite number and not prime number. So we need to set it to 0. Okay. So what are the numbers which divide or which are the multiples of 2? Before that, let me also log the first element which will be struck by 2. 
So in this case, 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, so the first element which is struck by 2 is 4. Let me log that information. So make this 0 because it's divisible by 2. Remember, 2 is present inside i. So the next value divisible by 2 is 6, 8, 10, 12. This is basically plus 2. 14 plus 2 is 16. And 100 is also divisible, perfectly divisible by 2. And the next non-zero number is 3 here. But let me write the code here first. So I'll assign i is equal to 1 because as per this second, second step, starting with the second entry in the array, which is index 1. So for now, let me write i less than n itself. We could optimize that. I'll show that later on in the same video. So this external for loop selects numbers one by one. And inside this outer for loop, we check for non-zero elements because if it's zero, we need not check for its multiples, okay? So we need to check this. If that number already has zero, then skip it. If it's non-zero, then only check for multiples of that selected number. Okay, this is zero, so skip it. Num of i is zero, so we need not check that. So only if num of i is not equal to zero, then only check if there are any multiples of that number. Okay, now let me write a for loop and check for multiples of num of i. So what will be the initial value of j? That is the first element which is divisible by the selected number which is present inside num of i. So since the next non-zero number is 3, the first number 3 strikes off is 1, 2, 3, it's already struck off, 1, 2, 3 is 9. So 3 strikes 9 for the first time. Similarly, uh, the next non-zero number in this list, let me strike this off, that is since 15 is divisible by 3, I insert 0 there. So the next non-zero number, which is prime number, is 5, which strikes 25 as its first element. 7 strikes 49 for the first time, okay? First element being struck by 7 is 49. So what's the relationship between these two numbers? 2 raised to 2 is 4, 3 raised to 2 is 9, 5 raised to 2 is 25, and 7 raised to 2 is 49. So the first element struck by the number present at num of i is num of i square. Okay, so we could just write it as num of i into num of i. Okay, so check it until, hope you could understand this, num of i into num of i is nothing but num of i square, which is the first element being struck off by the number present at num of i. So check this until j is less than or equal to 100 because we need to even check for the number 100, okay? So for each iteration, increment the value of j by the previous value of j plus whatever is present inside num of i because to get multiples of num of i, we need to add num of i to itself. That way we get multiples of num of i, okay? So j is equal to j plus num of i or else j plus equals num of i. Both syntax work. So now inside this, I'll assign num of j minus one. I'll show you why. So two is present at index one, three is present at index 2 okay and 4 is present at index 3 so as you can see the index number is one number minus the number present at that position right so 9 is present at index 8 so I'll write j minus 1 is equal to 0 that means num of j minus 1 whatever is present at num of j minus 1 
is perfectly divisible by num of i. So that's it. So this completes our program. As simple as that. Okay. So just don't over complicate it. So we can change this and optimize the code here. So let me explain that. As we had showed you in our previous day video tutorial, link to which is present in the description section of this YouTube video, you can check until square root of the maximum number. In this case, square root of 100 is 10. If you check for multiples of 10, that's enough. You need not check for multiples above 10 to get all the prime numbers until the max number 100. Okay. So we have already proved it in our previous day video tutorial and link to which is present in the description section of this YouTube video. Okay, so now I'll write i is less than or equal to limit, which is nothing but square root of n. This is a huge optimization in the code. The outer for loop runs uh, less number of times. Compare it with running this outer for loop only for 10 times versus running it for 100 times. A lot of difference, right? So look at the initial value of j. It's square of num of i. And it executes until j is less than or equal to n. And j value jumps for num of i times for each iteration of this inner for loop. And you already know why I have written j minus 1 here because the correlation between the value and the index is 1 is present at index 0, 2 is present at index 1. That is index value is 1 less than the element present at that position. So I'll write num of j minus 1. So that's composite number. So we will be storing 0 inside it. Okay. So let's write the code in our editor now. This for loop is to display the elements present in the array. So let me make space between these two for loop and write another for loop. So as per step two, I'll initialize i to the second entry in the array and iterate it until i is less than or equal to limit. So we already know what is limit. That is, it's square root of the maximum number, which is n. So since we are using SQRT, let me even include the library file math.h header file. Okay, so instead of writing SQRT of n directly inside this for loop, for, for each iteration it goes on, goes into this math.h header file and, and calculates it, the result. So instead of doing that, assign it to limit and use that inside your for loop. So for any number which is not equal to zero, find all its multiples and store zero at that location. So the first number, that is first composite number of num of i is num of i square. So since we are already importing or including math.h library, I'll use power of method, that is power of num of i comma two. That's equal to writing num of i square. So run this internal for loop, inner for loop until j is less than or equal to num and for each iteration, increment the value of j by num of i. So that's how you get multiples of num of i. So since the correlation between this index and the value present at that index is, the index is one number less than the value present at that location. So I'll write num of j minus 1 is equal to 0 because it's composite number which is perfectly divisible by num of i. So let me print all the non-zero elements now. That's it I guess. So let me compile this code. I have not declared j I guess. Yes, we have not declared j here. Uh, apart from that everything looks fine. So let us check for so these are the prime numbers. So we could eliminate one here. So these are the prime numbers from two to 100. So get to the printf statement and initialize i to the second element of the array, which is which has an index of one. So these are the prime numbers from two to 100. We could have a nice message here. 
So I let the user know that, uh, let me align this. This is sieve of Eratosthenes method to find prime numbers from two to percentage D. The value is present inside macro N. So let me execute this once again. So prime numbers from two to 100. Let me have a new line character at the end to just make it look nice. So you could change this to maybe 500 and you'll get all the prime numbers from two to 500. Check all these numbers. These are five. These are all prime numbers from two to 500. Uh, you could even change this to 1000 too. Okay. So that's it. Let me include a new line character again here. So change this to 1000 and it would give you all the prime numbers between two and 1000 and here you have it. These are all the prime numbers from two to 1000. Okay. So this is what our program demands. That is find all the prime numbers from two to 100 uh, using save of error toss the knees. So this is the program our problem statement demands from us. Okay. So since the max number is 100, we are taking n as 100 here. And we find square root of the maximum number, which is 100, which is present inside macro n. And the outer for loop executes only until limit times. Okay, we have proved this already. That is, uh, we need to check only until ten, uh, square root of maximum number. Okay. So check only for non-zero elements and the initial value of J is uh, square root of, sorry, it's num of I whole square, okay? And run this code until J is less than or equal to N and for each iteration increment the value of J by num of I to get all the multiples of num of I. And since the correlation between index and the number is, the index number is one value less than the value present at that index. So num of j minus one will be the composite number, will be the multiple of num of i. So store zero at that location, okay? And print all the non-zero elements, which are of course prime numbers from two to n, in this case from two to 100. So please visit the link present in the description section of this YouTube video for source code notes and discussion about this topic. Stay subscribed to our YouTube channel and blog and please share this video with your friends on WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Telegram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And please do not forget to like this video on YouTube. Thank you.